Arsai Scorpius. So remember what I was talking about before, right, guys? Uh, about like fight negotiation and and uh, like potential. So I'm not going to be able to beat the Scorpius in a rate fight, but what I can do is I can keep the energy high, and let my two size two shields do a lot of the work. And because I have much more acceleration, I can actually get in on the Scorpius here on a pass like this. I gotta make sure his shields stay down because I don't want his shields coming back up. Which they're doing right now, bruh. Good disengage. There's a turn here. Let's see what he does. Also, a big mistake here. This is what I mean about negotiation, right? So I caught that disengage. So he tried to get his shields up didn't work too well for him back into shield power nice okay so my shields are low now so he's gonna push on to me but I think I might be able to take this trade no now I need space and there's the superior acceleration on the, on the Sentinel Right? Because even though his top speed is quite high in that thing, it's acceleration. So I can choose and dictate when and where I come into the fight. So now I get my shields back up. But the thing is, he's got lots of hull damage, whereas I'm doing pretty good. Need some more boosts to come saved up here. I'm going to try and shake off some damage in this turn. I'm going to shake off some damage here. Reverse the fight direction. Back into shields. So his shields are red. So I'm not going to avoid the turret gunner, but I can avoid some of the pilot guns. And then back off again. Into that push. Into the back. So he's going to stay on me. Actually, that's an advantage for me here, because I can keep his shields a little bit down. Mm, no, this was a mistake. This was a mistake. A lot of heavy fighter gameplay is basically a DPS race on paper, right? So, because I have the superior um, shield profile and just maneuverability, I get to dictate the fight. Which means I'm gonna win this fight. It's just a matter of time. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, it, like in a one v one, in a, in a gang setting, things might be a little different here. But then with multiple vanguards, you can just kind of do the same thing, but more at scale, right? So you might actually come in more aggressively. So I'm actually gonna drop even more front shields here. And just see if I can't take the trade. There we go. See, lots of fire I'm avoiding here. Lots of fire I'm avoiding. Alright, into those turns. Okay, so I'm going to trade here. I'm just going to take some hits. But at the expense, he's taking hull damage. And I'm not taking any hull damage right now. There, we'll turn into that turn here. I need some boost because I'm going to get, get ready to disengage, but there's the kill, right? And that's what I'm talking about. And that's with a gunner. I have no gunner, so if I had a gunner on the Sentinel, I'd, even more, I'd be even more powerful. And I didn't even have to use the EMP, and if I did, I'd be even more powerful on top of that. We're actually going to fight another Scorpius right, right after the one we just fought. Put our shields to the double front here. And keep our engines charging because we're going to need some energy here in this turn. And it's the same process, right? So we want to control the distance and we want to dictate when and where the fights take place. So he's going to fire here. We're going to kind of walk over top of his shots. I should fire a little too soon there. All right, so right here, this range here, the Scorpius is, 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 is dangerous. So we don't want to kind of stay at that range forever here. Let him come to me. Do some S turns. Just kind of walk into him. Now I can push on him here. Oh, so he picked that up. He pushed backwards. So that was a good that was a good defense. So 
So he's shooting, 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 shooting for days here, but it's not really helping. And again, right, I control when and where the fight takes place. Little S turn here to keep keep his shields down. Now he's done his rounds. Now I get to. Tr so it, a lot of it's a DPS race, you know. So right here, I'm gonna use the last bit of my shields here to kind of get in and push on him here, right? And then I can disengage because I've won the fight. I've got lots of power left, right? And again, right? That, that's so you get to see like the 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 difference in acceleration and how much that affects. Uh, when and where the fights take place So now I've got the initiative here. I can come in He's gonna shoot too far. So he's gonna waste a bunch of his capacitor here Into into the main engine push Into the shield recharge because I want to increase my shield resistance on this turn a Little s turn here get a little closer And drop the mag on him and I'll do one more mag because I got just enough shields to do one more mag. And then slide out of that turn. And his front shield's way too high right now. So I want to drop another mag on him here as I kind of... And again, right? We're just kind of wave pattern setting at range. And here again, I drop another mag on him. So we're, we're out... We're out DPSing his shield recharge rate by quite a mile. Oh, see, my shields are gone now, and I've got no boost, so now I have to disengage. But look, he's already critical, his structure's red, and he has really nothing, like, he has no options here, right? So he can sit and recharge his shields, and he can keep flying towards me, but it doesn't matter because I can always out-accelerate him. So I can OODA loop whenever and however long I want until I choose, you know what? Now is the time to come in, right? Now I, I, I have full shields, full engines. I got lots of boosts coming up. And uh, he's going to continuously keep losing these fights. So his only option here is to either disengage entirely or call for some kind of wingman or backup or, or whatnot. So push in here. Again, right? So here's the first mag. Takes about two mags to drop his shields. Right, I'm avoiding some fire. Again, with my better accelerations, like with 13 Gs of acceleration here, I have a lot more, uh, you know, negotiation. I can, I can shake off some of these rounds at range, even with my big profile, whereas um, the Scorpius is just really struggling to, sh to shake off any damage. So here, right here, right? So I'm able to shake off just enough damage to kind of offset the DPS difference, but not for this turn. So now I have to disengage. I'm not sure I was missing a lot of shots there at range for some reason. I just need to get closer. But here, but again, right? <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, the combat perfected for the Scorpius, but uh, it's anything but. Because it has no options. So here we go. Now we can come back in. We get to dictate the fight. We've got full shields. Get our boost nice and charged up. So he can have his shields back. It's all good. It's all good. So he slid out of that turn here. Here's the first mag. Right? Like, it's a lot of DPS, I must say, on the Scorpius. So you don't really have a lot of time in the bubble to, to really engage. Right? But the Vanguard does have the negotiation. So you can see here, I'm actually able to shake off some of his damage. Even with the, the superior rates on the Scorpius. Right? So I'm actually going to just take this trade and just end the fight here. Because I don't want to just keep on engaging forever. But he's trying to recharge his guns too. And there it is, right? So I took a trade, but I took some damage from that last fight as well. So, you know, in the interest of saving time, I can, I can engage him here like this. And then we'll finish off with this Banu Defender here from Okami.
And same process here. I'm actually going to pre-nose a little bit to gain distance. To gain exactly the distance I'm looking for. And then... He's not going to close the distance here, so he's going to be at the mercy of my superior DPS. Main thruster towards him. He's going to push on this turn, so I'm actually going to walk against his motion. And get some boost ready because he's going to disengage or he'll die, which he chose death. There. How to Vanguard 101. I absolutely love playing this game. And what I love about it the most is being able to teach people kind of the, the, the ins and outs of, of fighter combat. And I gotta say, even though the Scorpius, as beautiful as it may be, right now people need to understand what the Scorpius is good at and also where the Scorpius is falling short. As you can see, the Vanguard Sentinel comes out clearly on top, even though the Scorpius is the latest and greatest in our line of ships. The Scorpius at the current time is falling just a little bit behind when it comes to any kind of PvP meta. And I hope this video illustrates it very clearly as to why the Vanguard Sentinel, as out of the heavy fighters, in my opinion, the Vanguards are at the tip of the spear. It's hard to say what's better between the Hurricane and the Vanguard, but we'll do some more testing when I got a sneaky suspicion the Vanguard's going to take it. We get better, folks, by taking 1% every day and never giving up. Enjoying the process as we go, making great friends along the way. I was Avenger 1 guys, and I hope to see you guys all out for the next stream and the next video. I hope this was helpful and entertaining. And if you want to learn more, please consider watching some of these other videos you see here to help you become the best dogfighter that you can be. Take a look at Predator Mounts if you're interested in getting a mounting system for your joysticks. They're the ones I use. And hopefully I'll see you guys out there. I was Avenger 1. And I'll see you next time.